physics we have lots of like many body interactions leading to very uh, complex problems like quantum chemistry, uh, different quantum phases. And uh, now we're getting like these near-term quantum computers and quantum simulators available for us. So um, there are many interesting ways to overlap quantum physics with machine learning. Um, and these are some very exciting directions right now. So there are different ways to uh, connect these two fields. Um, first, some, many people have used classical machine learning techniques to study quantum physics, like using neural networks to model um, these uh, the ground states of many body Hamiltonians. I think there might be a talk on related to this tomorrow or something. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're using a quantum machine to perform classical quantum computation. And uh, like performing these new, uh, and getting faster results, or um, we're, we'll, we'll solve some quantum problems in this way. So we have some like, quantum circuit, and then uh, you take input and some input state, and then uh, you do uh, a quantum algorithm on your quantum computer, and then you get a classification result. So uh, while there have been some works on this, there are many open questions along this direction. So first, like uh, when I ask why or oh, does this work? Why, why or how does do quantum machine learning algorithms work? And uh, we want to develop these circuit models that are suitable for near-term implementation and to develop relationships between the quantum machine learning and um, these uh, existing tools in say, condensed matter physics and quantum information theory. So that's the goal of our work. Um, the main contributions that we have are as well, so we have this uh, concrete and efficient circuit model for quantum classification problems. We demonstrate the computational power from quantum, uh, to recognize different quantum phases of matter and part of theoretical explanation for why it works in terms of RG flow, entanglement verbalization, and quantum error correction. Um, so, in particular, our circuit model is uh, inspired by existing machine learning techniques. So, the machine learning technique that we're looking at is this uh, CNN, which is oh, uh, this is a convolutional neural network. Um, and the way CNNs work for classical computation is that it's a this feed-forward network with many different kinds of layers. So, you have convolution layers, fully layers, and fully connected layers. And these convolution layers essentially each map is computed uh, using a small weight matrix and a translation invariant way from this like input image or from the previous map. So it's like um, it's like some general like dot product uh, way to compute this, and uh, the same weights are used across the entire image in a translation invariant way to reduce the number of parameters that you need to um, to train for. And then in the Pooling layers, so after applying several convolution layers, the pooling layer reduces the system size. So, like taking a two by two uh, block to an individual block, and then um, in the end, after your system size is reduced uh, enough, then there's a fully connected layer that produces a classification output. So, what we did was um, in the quantum case, we, pr uh, we have the same kinds of layers. So we also have this convolution pooling and fully connected layers. The convolution layers now uh, do, perform these local unitaries in a translation of merit ways. So the same unitary is being performed on all the nearest neighbor pairs. Um, your input state is just some quantum state. And in general, like, while I'm illustrating this for 1D for simplicity, it could be any 2D or 3D state also. Um, now, the pooling layers reduce system size by measuring a fraction of the qubits and then 
based on the outcomes of these measurements, uh, determine the uh, unitary operations to apply on the remaining qubits. And the fully connected layer is just some non-local measurement here. And uh, so you see that like in, in comparison to say having a just general n qubit unitary acting on this input state, uh, because of this of these translation invariance constraints, then there are much fewer parameters to uh, the unitaries in this circuit. Um, now, to demonstrate the computational power of this circuit model, what we did was we considered a specific problem uh, called quantum phase recognition. So, in, uh, in particular, if we have some like uh, quantum many body system in some unknown ground state, uh, it, and then some uh, given quantum phase P, the problem asks whether this ground state belongs to this uh, phase P. This is a direct analog of image classification, like saying whether an image is cat or dog, but it's intrinsically quantum because you're classifying different quantum states. And our claim is that this uh, quantum CNN circuit is very efficient in this quantum phase recognition problem. So in particular, the final measurement is going to yield one with very high probability if you're in the phase and zero otherwise. So um, to illustrate this, we looked at a particular example. Uh, this is we looked at this using numerical simulations. Um, so this example that we're looking at ground states of a family of Hamiltonians. Uh, without these two perturbations here, the ground state is the cluster state. Um, but uh, And the phase diagram in the primary region we're looking at has three different phases. You have paramagnetic phase, SPT, and anti-paramagnetic. So these, uh, this blue uh, line here and the red line here, these the points along those were uh, uh, this phase boundary was extracted like numerically using uh, DMRG methods uh, and looking at just like the second order of the energy density and the colors. This colored background here was the um, classification we obtained using this quantum CNN circuit at, uh, and so you can see that this quantum C uh, the quantum CNN circuit is here. I don't know why the X's and Z's are not typed here, but um, like these are some X's and Z's here. And now, uh, so you can see that this phase diagram is produced, uh, reproduced very well already, and, um, and the colors indicate like the probability of the final qubit measurement. This is just an example of one of the cuts <laughs> along this phase diagram. You can see. Uh, the different colors represent like the different depths to what, like how many layers we have in our uh, quantum CNN circuit. So by adding more layers, we also get a sharper contrast. Um, and now uh, I'll briefly discuss why it works. So we were we, have, we were explaining this using this uh, uh, entanglement um, renormalization and quantum error correction. So in particular, this quantum CNN circuit um, is uh, looks very similar to this entanglement renormalization circuit, except it runs in a reverse direction. And so that means that, uh, well, this entanglement renormalization uh, has isometries which are implemented by injecting uh, input states of zero into unitary gates. The, in the QCNN, what we do is uh, we interpret the measurement uh, controlled unitaries as uh, quantum uh, error correction, with, where the quantum error correction operation is this uh, pooling layer unitary that we just applied. And you can see that this is uh, uh, what we said was that this together uh, sort of simulates this RG flow mechanism, which is very successful in like um, determining. Uh, in determining different quantum phases. Um, now, uh, I haven't talked much about training the network. Um, in general, this uh, so uh, so the particular circuit we looked at in the previous case was just to demonstrate uh, this representation power of the model, um, and we didn't do much training on that. In general, it's probably more the training is more necessary, um, and. Uh, because we have a small number of parameters, this training would be uh, very efficient. And uh, right now, we're still performing like some numerical simulations to better demonstrate the uh, ability of this training. Um, but in general, the 
who will, the training does will be to uh, expand this uh, um, the classification boundary of the circuit to the target phase boundary. And uh, we also have an alternative explanation for this, uh, uh, why this model works, and it uses uh, this uh, idea of string order parameters. Essentially, um, detecting an SPT phase um, is like detecting a non-zero expectation value of a string order parameter for the Z2 cross Z2 SPT. Uh, this is one example of string order <coughs> that can be considered. Um, the, of course, away from the fixed point state near, near criticality, your string uh, order parameter might decay uh, polynomial with, like polynomially with the correlation length, so it might be hard to detect this non-zero expectation value. So in the, the, what the QCNN does to avoid this is to measure this weighted sum of more than one string order parameter. And in particular, it measures an exponential sum, uh, a, a sum of exponentially many string order parameters with uh, different weighted uh, coefficients. And um, yeah, so I'm done. Uh, essentially, uh, our main contributions are to introduce this concrete circuit model for classification on a quantum computer, and then we apply it to this quantum phase recognition problem and give a this theoretical explanation for um, why it Yeah. Okay. So, 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 how general is the string operator and string order parameter? If we, in principle, if we consider two-dimensional SPT, do we, do we expect anything at, uh, as analog of the string order uh, string order parameter at all? So, uh, yeah, the string order parameter explanation is mainly just for the one D case. Um, uh, I'm not sure if there's like another like a similar analog for the. Tree. Even for one-dimensional SPD, is that general? Can we, can we, for, for, for any one-dimensional SPD, can we find something like this one? Uh, this one? 